Well met, everyone. I am Rich the Lich, and today I want to talk to you about consequence. Consequence for your PC's actions. The goal and the focus of today's video is to highlight to you by scribbling over one of my world maps and kind of navigating our way through the way that a video game might do it in an RPG sense, a game like Witcher or even an MMORPG, Guild Wars 2, EverQuest did it, Dark Age of Camelot, so on and so forth. Zelda, things like this, of course, right? I want to show you how by presenting simultaneous sort of adventure hooks and quests and giving your player options, giving your PCs options, I should say, kind of a choose your own adventure thing, I want to show you the importance of how you can create a very believable living and breathing world and also make the, the actions of your players or most importantly, the inaction of your players reveal itself through your world so that it feels like they're in a, a living, breathing thing. Okay, so let's jump over here real quick to this map, all right? We're looking at a map called Arathata. It's a world map I made. I don't know what I made this for if I was just practicing and drawing or I, I haven't brought this to my table, okay? Maybe I'll use it for something. And there's a lot more going on here, okay? You know, if I was to scroll around real quick, I'll show you. See, I mean, there's some stuff down here and so it's a little bit whatever, okay? There's a, a bit of goodness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to here. You know we cannot continue. One second. We are good to go. Now, what will often happen is you will see this quite a bit in, in most video games, right? Especially the ones that are really focusing on creating that living, breathing world and making it feel like the world is moving even when your PCs are not. And the reason why this is important is, number one, you can start to work your way through a system that many, many people in 5th edition complain about, which is the rest mechanic. I run 9 to 10 players. That's very unwieldy. The amount of resources that my players have in combat, the amount of spells that are being slung round to round is far, I mean, obviously it's two to three times more than a group of three or four players, right? And what happens is in a fifth edition system that's designed around the idea that you're going to have five to eight or whatever it might be encounters per day, that's unwieldy because one encounter with nine players in my group and then all the monsters and NPCs I need to control, that's going to take 90 minutes of gameplay time. All, we'll, all, all that we will do during my games is fight for five, six hours if I need to try and run five to six encounters per day, right? So I do give my players downtime. I let them fight just maybe one fight, and then they go to the village, and they negotiate, they talk, they use their social skills, the other pillars of gameplay besides combat. And maybe they have some downtime where the wizard wants to acquire some books from this old ancient library, and he wants to start scrawling some stuff into his spell book. If you read the rules on that, that can take a little bit of time. I don't remember exactly what it is, but we're talking hours of time. So I will allow my players to say, hey, do you guys want to spend three days here? You don't have any majorly pressing quests. You know, kind of one of those, the princess will die tomorrow morning. Go rescue her now. Do you want to take three days? And one thing it does is it starts creating a world that feels like it's in constant movement and flow because I can start advancing time. You know, if that ends my session in real time and then we come to the table next time, I say, hey guys, last time we ended here and now that we come back to the table, we begin today's session in the village of Bonewick or the city of Bonewick and it is 11 days after you left the dungeon. Now here's the kind of point of this whole video. You have to come up with something that happened during those 11 days and I'm not talking about anything the PCs did because remember what happened during those 11 days was already discussed at the end of last session kind of the wrap-up where they said we want to look into finding some sort of a, a general store where we can acquire some silvered weapons because we know we have a, a werewolf fight coming up and one rogue says hey I want to kind of dabble into the thieves guild a little bit and these are all things you can handle as a dungeon master behind the scenes you can send out the emails and kind of negotiate with your players and talk that way. But that way you don't bog down table time by pulling one player aside and having the other players just sit there with nothing to do, right? These are all behind the scene things that you can handle. But the world is still moving outside of where the PCs are for those 11 days. And by moving the world forward, it starts making the PCs actions significant. And more importantly, it makes inaction 
significant. What do I mean by that? If we look over at this map, right, you'll oftentimes have like an area like this, let's say. We have Hiskarn, which is some sort of city, and then High Point, right? Pretend that the PCs in your video game, right? Let, let, let's forget D&D. Let's not talk PCs yet. In your video game, you've done, you've explored everywhere down in the south. See this bone wick right here? Everywhere south of that you've been, okay? You'll notice that Hiskarn and High Point, what'll often happen is you'll get something like this. And then even if I kind of change the opacity a bit, right? Notice how it's kind of fog of ward. And all that basically means is this whole area I haven't really been to yet. Technically, this space looks more like this, right? This is usually going to be a little more accurate, okay? I haven't been north of Bonewick yet. So maybe this hasn't even shown up yet, right? That label doesn't say Hiskarn. You see a, a building on your map. So you pull up that Skyrim map, right? And all you see is just the building, but it hasn't been labeled yet. And then, of course, you know, you wander into that region, you get near that mountain range, and all of a sudden on screen, you know, real big letters, it pops up and Hiskarn, you know, the Valley of Kings or whatever. Oh, cool, I found a new area. And now on your map, you can fast travel there, right? Very video gamey stuff, okay? Let's get rid of this for a second. And let's pretend that we've got a journey going on with your PCs, okay? Remember, now we're talking in D&D space, okay? I like a little more yellow. I'm just nitpicking. Okay, here we go. So what we have is your PCs are currently in Bonewick, all right? And they are making a journey. They're traveling north, okay? Now, in Bonewick, an NPC quest. They meet some NPC. In Bonewick and he gives them a quest and what he basically says and this is where it's important to kind of think through these things as the DM give them the choose your own adventure do they want to go left do they want to go right right you know what I mean do they want to open the door or do they want to stay here and, and take care of whatever is happening here so the quest says that they want to travel through this valley to the place called Wintervale something is happening there it doesn't really matter what's happening there right now okay you need to detail out what the region of Wintervale is. There's elves that are being assaulted by, you know, minotaur hordes coming from these mountains. Whatever the quest is. Now, you have another quest that goes through the Pass of North Wall, right? And it goes right through here, and it makes their way into, man, Anamathiel Forest. So we have Wintervale, which is a forest, and Anamathiel Forest. This NPC in Bonewick, okay, remember, we're talking D&D time now, not video game. This NPC in Bonewick gives the group a quest to go to either Anamathiel Forest or Wintervale. Now, yes, if you tell them that whatever is happening in Wintervale is going to climax and reach its peak, crescendo, I don't know, reach its end in two days, and the issue in Anamathiel is some long-standing thing that's going to, you know, take shape over the course of a month, that level of deadline has kind of informed the PCs that they might want to go to Wintervale first and they can afford to be a little more lax on dealing with Anamathiel because it's not happening yet, right? But if there's forces from High Point that are invading Anamathiel tomorrow, okay? So High Point has bad evil, or I could have just said evil, <laughs> invades tomorrow, Okay? That's the key word. Wintervale sinks. I don't know why. Tomorrow. All right? You have a druid in your group of PCs. He doesn't want that forest to sink. That's bad. There's some ancient groves there that are considered sacred to all druids in the world. Right? So, we're going to make this look like a road. And now we have determined that there is a reason to go left. Northeast, northwest, and there's a reason to go to the northeast, to go right. Let's assume, regardless of what your scale of this map is, that the PCs have the travel means. Maybe it's teleportation circles or something like this, right? You have a druid. You're going to two forests. There's a teleportation circle here, and then there's one here. So they can certainly get to either of these two places by tomorrow to deal with the threat. The the druids family members or you know a conclave of elves that the pcs have worked with and they you know feel like they they're their friends right they're getting invaded by this evil force from high point tomorrow so they might want to go to anamathiel forest go to this teleportation circle 
we got to make it look like one, right? So there it is. Raw. That looks more like a piece of pizza, but it's okay, right? They want to go to this teleportation circle, and they want to help defend Anamathiel Forest. That needs to be done by tomorrow, because if they're not there, the invasion force gets in, and it's over, right? They lose. And then they need to go here, or simultaneously, they have an interest in going to Wintervale to keep it sinking from sinking, right? That is where the player choice comes in. Every DM presents options for your players. Unless you're railroading them, you know, and saying that you currently can't get through this pa this valley pass, the only way you can go is that way. Well, now you're forcing the PCs to go there. Just the same as if you were saying, this is going to happen tomorrow, and this is not going to happen until six months from now, right? You've kind of led your PCs one way. But when you have sort of horrible consequences and maybe the PCs can't see through and you haven't given them enough information and background for them to determine which one is worse. But the druid in the party just has ascertained that they're both bad situations. I'd like to fix both. And they do know, and maybe don't give them this way out. You can kind of railroad it this way. Don't give them the option of splitting the party up, right? I know for me with a group of nine, it basically means I need to run two sessions. I can't have five people at my table sitting there twiddling their thumbs on their phone while I role play the group that's going northeast for four hours. You know what I mean? So don't split them up. They need the entirety of their full force to fix either of these two problems. So here's the important part. Allow them to choose whatever they want. In notes, the good thing about doing something like this system is I am now preparing the Wintervale sinking and I'm also preparing the invasion of Anamathiel Forest. And all that entails the NPCs that are involved, what the fight looks like, how I want to run it. I'm building my terrain in case the PCs actually get to the forest and it's time to throw down. I have all my stat cards and, you know, the references to the monster manual of what monsters are coming at a high point, so on and so forth. I have both prepared. By doing that, it gives me confidence and allows me to let my PCs decide. I don't have to railroad them. Because whatever they decide, I'm okay with it. I'm ready to go. Okay? And that gives a sense of freedom at your table, which is wonderful. Here's the amazing part of why I'm going to pat my own back and say this video is amazing. Depending on which one they do not go to, in action, you have to have a consequence. And in a video game, oftentimes what happens is they go here. You will notice that when they... In a video game, when you, I should say, finish this thing, you get some sort of icon, right? A star or, you know, something that represents, we win, we succeeded. But then what'll happen is they go there. Three days later, the map looks like this. But, but, that's what you see on your map for Anamathael. That X is the most important thing you can do in the context of what I'm talking about in this video here. When you give your PCs choices, the world moves forward even when they're not doing something. In the time they're taking to get to Wintervale, in the time they're taking to take care of this situation, fix that threat, keep this, the, the forest from sinking, these forces are still moving. They're not waiting for the PCs. And what happens is notice how as you continue to do this throughout your entire world, and it doesn't have to be as global and large as all the way to the northwest save this, all the way to the northeast save that. It can be quite as simple as help the lady procure the last three potions she needs for an alchemical reagent or clean the cellars in the same lady's alchemical shop of, you know, filth and whatever. Right? You can simply just have on your little flowchart that the sellers weren't cleaned. So yes, they brought in the potions that they needed for her to finish that one reagent which cures the disease of a PC that was not able to be cured otherwise. Wonderful success. However, the filth and plague of the rats that are in her cellar has ruined her stocks, her stores, her research, her reserves of everything else. Therefore, she no longer has the ability to make any more potions for the next five months, which in turn can have a snowball effect 
of the paladin realizing that all of the children in the orphanage, there's some evil wizard that's basically in cursing and diseasing everyone in this village. And the or kids of the orphanage have gotten sick and they can't go to the, you know, the quack healer or whatever you want to call her, the hag lady witch for her potions anymore because all of her supplies have been ruined by rats. All because the PCs didn't fix the rats, but they chose instead to gather the resources they needed from the nearby woods, you know, pick different, different flowers in order to get that one potion to fix the PC. Now, yes, maybe they didn't give a damn about the rats. Here's the thing, though. They, you don't want to let them know all the consequences of those actions up front. Because if the paladin had known that the kids would be sick and therefore wouldn't be able to get all the medicinal potions they need, they might have said, you know what, dude, you're going to have to sit with your disease for another day or two. We need to fix these rats right? Just the same as is my situation here on the map. You don't necessarily know. Yes, the PCs can think through, well, what does that mean if we don't stop the evil invasion? Okay. But what happens is they later find out that Anamathiel is destroyed. Boom, it's gone. They invaded. Okay. And that druid circle was destroyed. And what happened is breaking that druid circle has broken a link in the chain of the druid circles that allow the party and all travelers or gators you know druids to travel the world it has broken the link and what it's done is it's turned they're not destroyed but it's turned off all the other druid circles that exist elsewhere if no if no other consequence by not saving anamathiel forest the pcs lost their efficient form of travel throughout the world for who knows how long Perhaps now that becomes a major quest where Anamathiel Forest is gone, but they can still repair that ancient druid circle, which will turn these back on again and allow them to travel more efficiently. Okay? What it, I just made demon horns. Whatever they're doing throughout the world, they're now going to think, damn, now we got to like trudge and walk everywhere, which has now shrunk the world for them, right? It's limited their ability to go to different places. You have to create consequence when they don't do something. And that is how when, you know, I talked, to, I rambled about the whole resting mechanic and all this other stuff and just X amount of encounters per day and give the, the wizard time to spend four days scrawling things in his spell book. The same goes for, let's just say all of this is gone. Okay, we haven't gotten to this point yet, right? Let's say they decide, they get some NPC quests and they ask how long before the Winterveil, before Wintervale sinks and how long before they invade. And the guy's like, I don't know, but... That stuff is happening, but that's been a threat for a long time. You don't have to give them all that information up front. Let them start making those skill checks. Let one of the PCs that is more concerned with fixing those two things than he is with rest and downtime, even though they just got out of a dungeon and they need a break. Maybe he wants to spend his whole evening of downtime investigating and figuring out which of these two is a major threat right now. But if no one does that and they're like, dude, we need some downtime, like wizard, take your three days. Here's what happens. After three days, after they rest, that's what happens on the map. They wake up and it's like, okay, so what were those two quests? And especially this really brings about a lot of heft and value if you haven't presented them with any other quests. That's the two they had. And you don't even have to role play through those three days of downtime. You just say, okay, guys, three days pass, nothing happens. I know you were kind of on edge, so you kept guards and you're in room, but you sleep for three days, you know, you rest. Obviously, all of you get your spells back. Your wounds have kind of, you know, lessened a little bit. You're all fully healed. You've been eating good food. Nothing has happened. Okay, back to story time. All right, so evil invades in the Northeast. Wintervale is sinking in the Northwest. What do you guys want to do? And then you tell them, you know what? You guys spent three days, right? Even if that only took two minutes of in-game time. You guys spent three days resting. Wintervale sunk. And they invaded like a day and a half ago. What do you want to do now? But now that informs you of... I have some quest line going off of destroying Anamathiel Forest. It's already been gone and this is already sunk. So the quest lines are repairing the Druid Circle and helping the Dwarven Miners negotiate their way through the sinkhole that's here two different quest lines but later on the pcs can kind of start thinking through damn it like what happened by us letting that sink 
you know, yeah, they're helping dwarves and they still have a good deed that they can do over here. But now the druid lost all of the druids of the north. You know, north of this line, all the druids are gone. They were all killed. So have consequence. Have the world keep moving when the PCs are either not moving, such as rest or downtime. Give that to them. You see what I mean? Like the game doesn't always have to be, geez, dude, we haven't had like a day of rest in like 19 days this whole month. It's just go, go, go. No, it's okay to have two weeks of just stuff they want to take care of so that you don't have to bog down the game with that, right? Two weeks of the, the rogue investigating the Thieves' Guild, infiltrating the Thieves' Guild, and learning more. Things that provide fuel for you as a DM to create more content and more quests. It's okay to do that in two weeks of downtime. But other parts in the world, the Lich is not just sitting in the back of the dungeon laughing for two weeks waiting for them to come in. He's gathered everything he wants from that. The dungeon is now empty and closed. And the big badass journey to that dungeon where the PCs were looking forward to, they get in there and it's just empty. There's nothing to fight. There's nothing to loot. There's nothing to look at. It's all scraped and destroyed and it's ruined. And yay, dungeon's over. You know what I mean? Like that whole level, you know, imagine you're playing God of War and the whole level is just gone that you were looking forward to because Kratos has finished whatever he wanted to do there. So that's a good way to handle downtime. But also, more importantly, when the PCs don't make a decision one way or another, have a consequence for that decision. And you start to notice how much your group will start to get invested in the world and they start to really think through the decisions they're making because the decision they don't make matters. And that's very similar to life, right? And that's how you create a living, breathing world. That's what I have for you folks today. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.